this this tier list it's a uh, it's such a riot, holy moly. Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace, and today we're gonna to be talking about, first of all, re-rolling and the different methods. And then right after that, we are gonna be talking about the re-roll tier list. I think everybody has got it down already, but it's always good to kind of know like the reasoning as to why. And then after that, I do want to introduce you guys to the Blue Archive Enlightenment Guide. This, um. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I, I was enlightened and just in regards to this guide I'm not gonna go through the entire thing I just want to like point out some key sections which will really help but considering by the time this video drops There's probably still gonna be like another 10 hours before the game launches I would highly recommend actually reading through this guide and so with all of that being said Let's jump right into the content in which we are going to be looking at the different reroll methods first And so let me give thanks to the maker of this guide before we move on authors Neptunia MX set sets and and tyrants as well as the blue archive community thank you guys for putting together this compendium all right and so with that being said let's move back to the reroll guide and so here is the first method and so in terms of rerolls it's going to be very very similar to like all other games where we progress up until a certain point and then we hound our mailbox as you can see this guy over here we're going to take all of the pre-registration rewards and then we're going to use them to roll and then after we roll if we are happy with what we want we bind if we are not happy then we're going to reroll and so with that, let me introduce you guys to the Twitter method for re-rolling. So this is probably the most straightforward one. Blue Archive, unfortunately, doesn't have a way to like naturally re-roll. However, I must say this Twitter method is pretty freaking close. So the first thing you need to do after you've like screwed up your account and you didn't get your Iori or Haruna or whoever, you're going to click the button on the top right. I believe this should be the, like the top right. So that's just like your settings button. And so clicking on this one is just going to bring up a bunch of menus as you can see down here. And then after that we are going to click onto the profile icon and then on top of that we are going to bind to a twitter account and then unbind it by clicking the same button this kind of binding system is actually very common i think for your star games if i remember correctly arc knights also works like this as well and so after you've binded and then unbinded your twitter account you're going to restart the game and hopefully you'll be able to see the dark blue button in which you can log in as a guest and then from there you should have a fresh account in which you will progress all the way up until the point with in which you can roll and then if it's trash again you do the same thing rinse and repeat that's why they call it a reset mara in japanese reset marathon oh yeah and so this is the current method on jp there is no like guarantee that it will work on global especially with some of the recent releases such as world flipper which did screw over our reroll button there are certainly what i would call like backup methods and so let's have a look at that and so for these methods credits to xeno for putting them together but essentially first of all he covers off the twitter linking method method down here as method two. This is identical to what we just saw and so I'm not gonna cover that. So let's have a look at method one. Method one is your salted email method. Honestly, I think I've covered every single method on my channel. Just look for one of my reroll videos in like Punishing Grey Raven or Princess Connect or Alchemy Stars. It's essentially gonna be the same. And so let's quickly run through this process just so that you are a little bit familiar with it. Again, all of this is kind of like a just in case the Twitter link is probably the best method. But regardless, let's have a look at this. So log in with the guest account, we do the tutorial and then the tutorial roll and then pre-registration rewards so exactly the same we get up to the certain point and we roll everything however after that we're going to be binding using the yolstar account so if i come back over here you'll notice that there is a yolstar bind over here so instead we are going to be using this button up here and so what this method is relying on is that you're going to be using a gmail email now i don't know if hotmail or yahoo or yandex or whatever has implemented the functionality but for me when i've done it traditionally you've had to use gmails like because they are the ones that provide this functionality of plus one plus two and so what happens is that if you do have a trash account and you want to throw it in the bin you're going to use that button i just showed you this one over here and you're going to bind it to your email and then after you bind it to your email you can go back to the title screen click the lower left button and then log in using the guest account now the salting method itself actually comes when we do the second re-roll because the first time through we're going to be using the test at gmail.com and so if we've rolled a second time and we're like okay well this is trash again what you're going to do is you are going to go back to that same button. However, when prompted for an email, you're going to put your original email 
plus one at gmail.com. And so for example, if through our first loop, we used test at gmail.com, this time we're gonna use test plus one at gmail.com. Now, I know a lot of games have actually blocked this salting method. And so I will give you guys the workaround right now. If the test plus one at gmail.com doesn't work, what you can do is you can put full stops in between the letters to make it work. So for example, our first loop, we're gonna use test at gmail.com. And then after that, we're gonna reset and go again. And then we're gonna put in our second email, which is t est at gmail.com. And so hopefully that will work. Most games don't block that method of salting, but I do know that a lot of games do actually block this plus one, plus two, plus three method. And so that is the backup to this backup method. All right, and so with that being said, I'm gonna move over to method three. Now this one is a little bit more tricky. You need to delete the shared preferences. If you guys are avid rerollers, you already know what this is. However, you do need a rooted Android. And so for Bluestacks, you do need Bluestacks Tweaker. For LD Player, you can just go into like the menu and kind of flick it on and off. But honestly, I'm not gonna run through this one. If you guys already know like what this is about, then this will be quite easy to follow. But otherwise I would highly recommend like these two over here before even looking at this one. And then after that, we've got method four, which is renaming of the folder. And so this method, as you can see, is quite short. However, you guys just need to remember that you need a file manager to be able to pull this off. And so that covers off the four different methods provided by Zeno. Again, shout out to Zeno for these methods. And so with that being said, let's move on to the tier list itself and this is a this is a real riot I don't want to call it a mess, but like big shout out to Rate and Z for actually putting this one together because there's a lot of rationale as to like where the units are living. So for example, you've got Iori over here and then you've got Haruna, Blue Damage. You've got the Hibiki over here, Sushi Man, Assassin. I'm going to be honest, guys, I have no idea what the frick that means. But I'm going to take a step back and tell you guys about the ones that we should be looking at. And so first and foremost, you guys already know if you guys have any waifus, if you guys have any preferred characters, you guys go for that first. In my opinion, if you guys don't get who you actually want, sometimes it just like makes the game harder to play. And so with that out of the way, let's start meta slaving. So here I'll introduce you to Hibiki. Hibiki is one of the greatest offensive supports in the game. And so this is her wiki page. I'm gonna scroll down to her skills. For her EX skills, she essentially just does a whole bunch of damage. And then moving over to the normal skill, she is also doing even more damage. However, it is targeting on the lowest HP unit. And so obviously, from a raid perspective when you're like killing one monster it doesn't really matter like she'll just be like continuously firing things at it and so moving on to the passive and sub which are actually so incredibly spicy i gotta zoom in for this one look look at this look at this guys increase her crit damage by 26.6 percent but it doesn't stop there guys watch watch this sub skill increases her allies crit damage by 17.3 percent i don't know about you guys but that sounds like a pretty big deal crit rate crit damage attack these are universally important stats to like every single game and it's even more important in this game in which there are dps checks especially for like the raids and so having these massive crit damage buffs it just makes you kill things faster, which is really great. And so that is Hibiki in a nutshell. She is a really, really strong offensive support. And so I'm pretty sure it is universally agreed that Hibiki is your first reroll target. Now, on the other hand, we've got Iori over here. So it is this chick over here. As you can see, another reroll priority. There is Shun over here, but I don't think she's actually in the game yet. But if she is in the game, by all means, go for her as well. Anyway, let's go back to Iori. So Iori over here, she is in a nutshell a massive DPS, like a very, very top tier character to taking down more raid units. The thing about the archetypes in this game is that snipers are exceptionally strong. Let's put it that way. So as you can see, Iori is a sniper over here. There is a sniper rifle. So snipers traditionally hang very, very far back. But if I remember correctly, they also have the highest attack stat and dish out the most DPS. To compensate this, pretty much all snipers are glass cannons. And so they are quite susceptible to like AOE or like other damaging skills like that. On top of that, generally speaking, I believe the PvP meta is like a sniper and a tank and then some other things to fill in. Sometimes it's more snipers, sometimes it's more tanks. But to be honest, PvP is like a whole nother story and we just don't have time to cover it today. But long story short, Iori is a fantastic sniper. That's that's pretty much it. All right, and so Iori, Hibiki tend to be the universally agreed reroll targets. And so I guess the best reroll would be those two plus another three star. Most people would recommend you go for Haruna, which is this one over here. And so she does blue damage and I believe blue damage is actually quite rare in the game. On top of that, she is also a sniper and so she is dishing out the big 
GPS. However, the thing about Haruna and a lot of the other characters actually is that she is farmable. So for example, we've got Shiroko down here who is also farmable. And honestly, you know what? I'm going to show you guys uh, this list down here, which is probably the most important list. And it's this guy over here, extra farmable character list. And so as you can see, Akari is farmable via four stages and then blah, 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 blah. Haruna is actually farmable via two stages. I know for a fact that on release, chapter eight will be out. I can't remember if chapter 12 will be out. And so guys, before you commit to rerolling or anything, like do check if that character is farmable. And so if we look for Iori and Hibiki, Iori is indeed farmable. However, it is only on one node and it is quite late. And then as for Hibiki, I don't think I see Hibiki at all. And so that just makes Hibiki so freaking valuable. And so yeah, that's why I would personally say prioritize Hibiki as well as Iori. Not only because they are exceptionally strong, but because Haruna also has two nodes that you can farm her from, uh, this one down here. And so yeah, that's a lot of the rationale behind like the reroll targets. But honestly, if you guys do get sick of rerolling, I would settle for like these two over here, Hibiki and Iori. And if you're really getting sick of rerolling, I would settle for Hibiki over here, simply because it's just gonna be harder to get her, right? All right, but otherwise, as always, I will drop this tier list down in the comments below. And then speaking of tier lists, I do want to come back to this guide over here. I think you guys caught a glimpse of it, but essentially these are all of the priorities in which you can like upgrade your characters, especially in the early game. And so as you can see over here, PVE explosive red attack type prioritization. And so as you move through each one, like you'll see it is for each of the different attack types as well as the different content types, right? You've got your best healers and then you've got PVP and then total war raids depending on which boss is up. And so yeah, like to be honest, this guide like and all of the efforts put together for this, it is actually like pretty insanely comprehensive. I don't think there is going to be a problem in terms of unit prioritization. However, before we wrap up the video, I do want to say a few more things in terms of like just quickly in terms of progression, because I know that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to get stuck on certain stages. And so let me come down here, uh, this guy over here. So this is essentially like your character page. And I want to make sure that you guys like know exactly what's going on here. Down here, you've got your typing, right? So as you can see, there are smiley faces. What that means is that depending on the terrain, they're going to either get a bonus or like a debuff on their attack. Over to the right, we've got a whole bunch of skills. So we've got the EX skill. We've got like the normal skill, I believe, and then a passive skill and then a special skill, if I remember correctly. TLDR, you want to be leveling these guys over here. Just under that, we have the unique weapon. However, below that, we have the equipments. And so it's these guys which are going to be giving you like the fat, juicy buffs. And so from here, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to come down to the equipments. And so as you can see over here, there are nine types of equipment that you can be used by your students. And so depending on where you're struggling, you can certainly prioritize some of these equipments. And the equipment farming is very, very similar to Princess Connect. As you push further, you're going to be getting more blueprints for like a certain hat, for example. However, that T5 hat is going to use some of the T4 hats and the T3 hats and the T2 hats. So really, there's not really any wasted material. And so what that means is that you do want to push as far in the story as you can. If I remember correctly from JP launch, we just kept going. We didn't care if we just like one star things. However, it is in your best interest to try three stars some of the stages, if not all of them. And the reason is because there is an unlimited skip function. However, this skip function only works if you three star the node. Anyway, back to like stats and stuff, I think we've covered off equipment quite well. And so if you guys remember, I was talking about this one over here, the smiley faces, like, you know, she's frowning at the house. And so if it is a house terrain, she is not going to be happy and she's going to lose like 20% attack, something like that. However, what is actually way more important is the color of their attack and defense. So as you can see, this is Shiroko. She is like the poster girl. She is a red attacker and defender. And so if I come over to this chart over here, this is essentially describing the interactions between each of the types. And so in a nutshell, the same color is strong against the same color. She is a red attacker, AKA explosion. And so she will deal extra damage to light armor. However, if she was to fight special armor or structures, she would be dealing less damage. And so you guys can see the multipliers down here. It is, it is actually insane. And I call this out because I made the mistake of just like juicing up like the top tier characters at the time. But little did I know like the typing matters so much. So if you can actually match the colors, you're going to be doing 50% extra damage on top of your normal damage. And so as you can see, penetration, heavy armor, yellow on yellow is weak and so forth. And as always, I will drop this in the description below. 
but yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to cover because I remember I struggled quite hard. I can't remember was it like world three or world four, but essentially I had leveled like all red characters and no yellow ones. And so it was just really tough for me to pass. However, with that being said, I believe this video has gone on way too long. And so I am going to leave you guys with a secret question. Are you guys going to meta slave and go for Iori and Hibiki? Or are you guys going to take it like quite casually and go for waifus? Either way, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. But otherwise, I really hope that this video has helped you. And if it has, please consider a like. Otherwise, on top of that, please subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel, we have a few ways down in the description below. But as old mate Iori once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.